Good afternoon. The Australian comedian Barry Humphreys, best known for his character Dame Edna Everidge, has died. He was 89. He'd been receiving treatment at a hospital in Sydney following hip surgery. A leading figure on the British comedy scene, he created many satirical characters and his family says he never lost his brilliant mind and unique wit. Here's our arts correspondent, David Sillito. Dame Edna Everidge! Hello, Potter! Dame Edna always said she was born with a priceless gift, the ability to laugh at the misfortunes of others. I am weightless, and you could do with losing a little. Success has gone to your jowls, Russell Harty. Oh, you're being oh. very, very cruel. <laughs> For more than 50 years, she took pleasure in saying the unsayable. I've had a little work done, but Have you? not quite as much as some of us. No! Don't look at me when you say that. Keep your eyes out, wait. Yeah. No, but the thing is, you are still recognisable. That's oh, what no. I like. She was so familiar, it was easy to forget that behind the glasses and frocks was a man called Barry Humphreys. He was off stage a cultured, art loving collector of rare books. <laughs> this me standing outside. Oh, one of the big clocks they've got out. <laughs> Edna was a character from his student days in Australia. And when he moved to Britain, he began to develop the character on shows such as Late Night Lineup with Joan Bakewell. He came onto television on Late Night Lineup, and we didn't know what to make of him. We thought he was a very dear man, a very brilliant man, quite clearly. And we knew that he would give him a chance, he would make it. It was the beginning of a long friendship. Edna became ever more brash and outrageous, but the man behind the wig was urbane, cultured and loyal. The world in which I don't have the friendship of Barry Humphreys is really painful because he was so resilient and energetic and, and loving and direct. I mean, there was a huge personality. And once you were exposed to it or and enveloped by it, it was wonderful. So that's a great absence in my life now. Barry Humphreys was the absolute opposite of another of his characters, the profoundly uncouth Celez Patterson. But Celez and Dame Edna were both testament to an extraordinary comic brain. A little, what is it, a little choker, darling? Yes. <laughs> what, the niche? The niche. To the brash housewife superstar. Gorgeous, darling. Did it all come off the one chandelier? Yes. <laughs> it's my nice. For many, Edna was so real, so engaging, it was easy to forget that the wit, the charm, the sheer audacity was all down to the brilliant comic mind of a man called Barry Humphreys. I've been draped. Nice to help with you. The comedian Barry Humphreys, who's died at the age of 89. Rishi Sunak has chaired a meeting of the Emergency Cobra Committee to discuss plans to evacuate British citizens from Sudan, where there's been intense fighting between rival military groups. The Foreign Office says it's doing everything possible to support those trapped in the country. But the BBC has spoken to one woman who says she feels abandoned by the UK government. Our Africa correspondent Andrew Harding is watching developments from Johannesburg. Andrew, are foreign nationals being evacuated now? Good evening, Clive. One group of Saudi Arabia diplomats has managed to make it out. They took a convoy over land to the Red Sea coast. They're now safe. But early this morning, we heard word from the Sudanese military that actually British, French, American diplomats would soon be allowed to leave on their own military planes. We understood that the airport in the center of town had been secured and that those planes apparently could come in immediately. But very soon after that, we heard that the fighting in the center of Khartoum had once again intensified. It's clear that the military do not have full control by any means of this huge city. I spoke to that one woman you mentioned earlier who was very critical of the foreign office, said, we feel like we've been abandoned. And just a few minutes ago, I spoke to a British businessman who was holding out in a secret location in the city centre, and he spoke of his absolute terror. He said he was waiting for the next bomb 
to land on his building. All right. Andrew, thank you. Andrew Harding there. A memorial service has been held to mark the 30th anniversary of the death of Stephen Lawrence, the teenager stabbed to death in a racially motivated attack. He was 18 when he died in 1993 at the hands of a gang while waiting at a bus stop in South East London. The Metropolitan Police Commissioner has apologised for failings in the aftermath of the murder, which led to the force's response being called institutionally racist. Here's Ashita Nagesh. The family and friends of Stephen Lawrence met at the church of St Martin in the Fields on the edge of Trafalgar Square. They'd gathered to remember a life that was unfulfilled. The 18-year-old was killed in an unprovoked racist attack. Stephen Lawrence had ambitions to be an architect. His brother Stuart said Stephen would have used his income as an architect to help his mother. She doesn't have someone else in our realm, in our family, to look after. Because Stephen would have been an amazing, world-renowned architect. But his architecture that he's now orchestrating is of a different nature. A report on the police investigation of Stephen's murder concluded that Scotland Yard was institutionally racist. Two of Stephen's five suspected killers were jailed nearly 20 years after his death. The former Archbishop of York, John Sentamu, addressing the congregation, expressed his outrage. Stephen Lawrence's murder was simply and solely and equivocally motivated by racism. It was the deepest tragedy for his family. It was an affront to British society. And the skewing and this timing of the mad investigation by the Met because of institutional racism was a severe blow to the Lawrences and to the rest of the nation. The message here today was clear that although it's been 30 years since Stephen Lawrence's death, the wounds that were inflicted then are still very raw. This morning, the Metropolitan Police apologised to the Lawrence family for the way it had failed Stephen. There's been some progress, but Baroness Lawrence, Stephen's mother, told the BBC the force had failed to change in the 30 years since her son's murder. Ashita Nagesh, BBC News. The continuing commemorations there for Stephen Lawrence. In the next hour, Wrexham Football Club kicks off one of the biggest games in its history. A win would secure promotion to the Football League. The team has been enjoying the spotlight of late after the takeover by the Hollywood actors Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Here's Andy Swiss. It's become football's very own feel-good movie. The pubs of Wrexham packed with fans to see whether the non-league club, now owned by film stars, could secure promotion back to the big time. It could be the start of something special here, and that's lovely for everyone, for the town. They've waited a long time for this, so it'll be worth every penny they've spent for them to get promoted. It'll be incredible, really amazing. I can't wait. Are you watching? Are you watching? Just a few years ago, Wrexham were in turmoil, at one point on the brink of extinction, but then Hollywood stars Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney turned them into a global phenomenon. I think the biggest challenge is a community looking around going, what are these two guys doing here? The unlikely marriage of Tinseltown and North Wales became a TV hit, and after a season of twists and turns, promotion would be the fairy tale finish. The profile of the club and, and the, the uplift the area's got because of the owners and, and the atmosphere in the stadium and everything added together, you know, it's, it will make it very special if we can get over the line. And so, some 15 years after they were relegated from the Football League... And back to Mullen, can he win it here? Yes, he can! For Wrexham and their famous owners, it could be a famous night. And what a day it could be for Wrexham. Kick-off um, just in under an hour's time. And that's it. I'll be back with the late news at 10, now on BBC One. Time for the news where you are. Bye for now.